I'll be taking our attendance. First, Mike. I'm here. Dan. He's in the here. Thank you. Re. Here. Naomi. Come back. Stephanie. I'm here. Gabe. We'll come here. Back. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, Chad. Here. Paul. Here. James. Present. Alex. Here. Thank you. Taylor. Here. Alan. Not here. Um, Naomi, are you here in the chat? Okay, I see. Sounds good. Wonderful. Awesome. All right. So let's move to uh, item B, approval of the agenda. Does anybody have any changes that they would like to pose to the agenda? Uh, Paul, go ahead. Thank you. I just have uh, one, uh, I guess two changes, but they're related. Um, so in old business, we have resolution to address accountability violations. There is a new resolution that um, is necessary for the pursuit of the second one. And it is, I, so my ask here is that we hear first um, the resolution I sent in the chat uh, about, I think, uh, about 26 hours ago now or so. Um, that would be, uh, so as item A in new business, I'd like to add a resolution to reconsider the decision to pardon all violations of the bylaws present in the Fifth Amendment passed earlier this January. Lengthy name, but that says exactly what it is. And then I'd like to consider old item, old business item A as item B in new business. Unless people would object to that. Does anyone object? Wonderful, so moved. And then I would also like to, I would like to remove new business item E, tabling resolution. I did not have time to finish that. So moved. Yes, Paul. Uh, I would motion that we strike H uh, from uh, committee updates. We have, uh, we have dissolved uh, this committee, I believe in our last session, and it's, it's gonna be a part of our new accountability framework that we're working with. My understanding, we did. If I, or if I remember correctly, here I can give some more insights. So Thank we, you. the yes, if you mind, the Greater Handbook Committee is now kind of the accountability committee that was me uh, kind of put on by me and Armando over the fall. Um, we're going to reset a meeting for us to go over the handbook. Um, I've been incredibly busy these past few weeks, so if someone else wants to kind of set that meeting and date. But um, once we get to there, it's just going to be replaced with the accountability committee. Can no, I'm vote? aware. I just thought we didn't have quorum, so we couldn't vote on it when you brought it up. It'll be a quorum. I don't know. Quorum at this moment? No, not at this yes. moment, but last meeting when you had brought up making it like the change. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. So okay. I, uh, it's a good question. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm fairly certain we did have that um, because it's, I mean, the fact that it's even called into question, you know, understanding we have quorum now, we could make the motion and ensure that that's the case. Because I know we're united on that within the governing documents committee. Um, but, you know, on the off chance that we didn't have quorum, Stephanie, I'd like to maybe motion that we formally dissolve the governing documents committee and work towards what Mike has described. I second that motion. Is there anyone opposed? Gabe has a hand up. Oh. Is this related to the conversation, Gabe? Oh, uh, yeah, but I was going to motion for it, but y'all got it. So we can. Thanks, Gabe. OK, so nobody's is anyone opposed? Wonderful, so moved. Excellent, Um. wonderful. Housekeeping is complete. Let's move on to some committee updates, chair updates. Uh, Taylor, take this one, please. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to let you all know I sent this to, your, in your, to you all in your email. There will be a mayoral debate on campus February 16th. It's very exciting. Reach out to Dr. Preuss. 
to the head of the political science department to help or read the email that I sent you. Um, I also wanted to mention Gabe is the only person on our council who volunteered to be on the student fee review panel. And this is a true avenue to have influence over what students pay each semester. This is very good true advocacy work, and I want to give a shout out to Gabe for doing so. Um, I also want to mention um, Chad's not going to be here next week, so let me know if you would like to be chair for the day. Um, another thing, Roy Montgomery is leaving MSU, which is very sad. So if you see him, go say, I'm going to miss you and good luck. Um, and I also want to make one little statement. We are all super busy right now, but I want to remind the council that we are here to serve the students, and I want to pose the question for you all to consider. Does the work we are doing reflect that? That is all. Thank you. On to Chad's updates. Uh, I have no additional updates for the chair uh, updates, um, so we'll go into Board of Trustees Gabe. OK, OK, y'all. OK, so. Whew, long, it's going to be a big update because so as you all know, I had my board meetings two weeks ago. Last week, I didn't give a, like a full report because um, I had like a lot of notes. Well, not two weeks ago, last week. Wow. Days are just blending together, you know, um, but here's the full report from those board meetings. OK, number one, um, we have two new BOT members, um, Olivia Mendoza and Jerry. Click, lock, I think, click. Um, they're the they're the new BOT members, as well as uh, as well as Ru uh, Russell Knowles, who's our chair, and Marissa Molina got reappointed to the board. Uh, yeah, awesome. And so, here we go. Foundation com campaign update. Um, is that uh, there's three new people uh, within that foundation campaign, and that's and, and that's helped boost um uh, the engagement uh, within the the campaign overall. There's a new a director of university events called Jessica Fernandez. I definitely think we should connect with with them um, to really look at uh, to really look into events as well. Let's see. There is some. Uh, there was a, a presentation on like the campaign and all the money stuff and how all that's going. Um, and and through that, I found out that. Uh, the Dreamer Emergency Fund, which was put in place during COVID to help undocumented and DACA students. Um, get emergency funding from the university to provide for uh, whatever needs it may be. Um, it has helped around 153 students, which I think is wonderful. Um, and through the Roadrunners Risings, uh, there are net assets of 42 million. Uh, there's uh, they're looking for transformational uh, to start like a transformational campaign. Um, yeah. Also, then there are let's see. There are a lot of programs that were discontinued um, because of lack of engagement and lack of enrollment within those programs. Um, and then there were other programs that were added uh, to, uh, to the university. Um, like uh, uh, one of them, I, I believe, was like a men's health minor. And then there was like other minors within that realm. Let's see. So then, uh, so then there. Uh, there's the Colorado Reengage Core, which means that universities can now give associate degrees um, with uh, with MSU Denver. And so right now, uh, that's what uh, what they're marketing is the associate of, of general studies um, to students who stopped out. And so it, it's a way to, to to try and bring students back in um, uh, to re uh, to start up again their university experiences. Um, and so that's that's I think huge off uh, the university. Um, there are more grant opportunities uh, with scholarships uh, in into grants. Um, there are right now around a, a two hundred fifty thousand jobs open in Colorado um, that require like at least a, a, some higher education. And so they're uh, they're really looking into how can we as MSU Denver um, help fill those jobs and, and create pathways towards those jobs. Um, uh, one of the big, huge things that right now is being look, uh, looked into here at MSU Denver and also just state and nationwide are, are micro uh, credentials. Um, and so are micro and stackable credentials and how can all those uh, be used to better um, be, what's it, oh my God, what's the word I'm looking for? to better the abilities and skills of, of people in the workforce and the students here as well. 
Okay, let's see. Awesome. And so uh, there was a big talk also as well as as to the way that the capacity that professors have um, right now uh, the university technically is under like a 4-4 plan. It's not like set in stone anywhere, but it's kind of like what's recommended, which means that like how much a work um, in class time other uh, professor gives a uh, well lecturing versus like service, which is like time to students, uh, research and all that. And so the are uh, they trying to, uh, to to look into bringing it down to a 3-3, meaning that professors would have less course load to teach and more time to spend like with students and more time to do like research and stuff. But that was a, a big, big topic um, because there was a, a lot of information that we just didn't know about how how these plans could affect um, students and stuff uh, because a lot of the information that was presented was correlational data, not causation data. And so it was just really hard to, to, to see like, is this actually something that we can do here at MSU? However, I will throw in that the School of Education, I believe already does a 3-3 plan um, and, and they've been successful in doing it um, and they've been able to do it with like the funding that they have. And so it is plausible. It's just kind of looking into more of like the details on how, on, on what all it would take to actually get there. Okay, see that's, there's still more. So just wait for a minute, wait for a minute. Um, awesome. And then another one was uh, looking into the new bill that was passed um, uh, requiring uh, universities to have um, health insurance, not health, uh, yeah, to have uh, health insurance to like all of its workers and stuff. Um, and so there's like three different options. Uh, one of them is that they have to follow what like the state says um, and provide it to like everybody um uh, to all their students another one is, is is proposing like a different model um and the third one is is sticking to what mc denver already does right now uh, with that insurance um and just expanding it to include all student employees as well let's see there's that workday update um with working uh, being like live and stuff however uh, there were errors with around like 100 students, but all that was uh, taken care of through account payables and personal checks. Um, awesome. And so then uh, I'll start, start, start to look more in, into the faculty things um, and, 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 how, and what impact your faculty have um, on retention of students and on getting students here to MSU Denver. Cool. And that, let's see. Mm -hmm. There's like a lot, so I'm just trying to like, what have I not said already? Let's see. Okay, cool. And so then when it came to the a, a comprehensive update on stuff that works from our chief uh, strategy officer, James Mejia, the first thing that was like, um, I must have talked about was that the top a priority right now at the university is housing and how uh, will that look on our campus um, with two separate projects. It has been separated now into two separate projects, one of those being student housing and the other one being um, a faculty and staff housing. I raised the point that we are in a non-traditional university and we have non-traditional students and so our housing should also be able to reflect that, meeting the needs of our students. Um, awesome. Uh, we've also looked at uh, Chief Mejia. He, he also talked about like a, a pathways to possible and how that has helped a lot in retention of students and their success. There's also the, the Dean Grants, which has helped uh, retain a potential a potential stop stop out or drop out students. Um, there's the college credit in high schools, uh, uh, college credit through a co concurrent enrollment in high schools, which they've seen can also have a big, huge impact on student retention. Um, yeah, and they're also looking like at registration and having potentially like, like a one-click registration and how all that looks and school of hospitality has its first VR course. Awesome. And then let's see, oh, when it comes to MSU Denver's uh, servingness and stuff, um, are they really, really looking into how can we better the experience of Black students here on campus? And so right now, uh, they're looking through an external consultant, um, a, a Dr. A Donita Mosby Tyler, um, who has done excellent equity work. And so uh, uh, are they working with, with them uh, to really see how can that be, be how, how can MSU serve better its black students and the black community overall here in Colorado. 
Awesome. Um, and then we talked about like uh, funding and capital equity um, and how there's advanced policy for equity access to, uh, and opportunity um, and, and, and really looking into how to enhance MSU's visibility as a, as a city anchor institution, meaning that institution that other universities here in the state can look at and really see all the strengths that we have and all the uh, projects that we're leading. Um, and let's see, uh, there's two IT projects that are being continued. Um, one of them is it's through the Health Institute Tower that they're trying to make. Another one is a C2 hub and how much money can go into the C2 hub. Um, and, and we won't know exactly how much funding will be approved for those projects yet. It's still being worked on. Uh, yeah, and then let's see. I also found out that, that Colorado is one of the very, very bottom states that really funds, um, that fund, it's one of the least states, wait, it's one of the states that funds students the least, um, both at the federal level and at the state level. And so that was very, very interesting. Um, and yeah, and lastly, it, it was just shown um, that through athletics, that in athletics, uh, they're focusing a lot on mental health. Um, and and so far, uh, they've seen that uh, students who are athletes have a higher a GPA, higher retention rate, and higher success rate while here at MSU Denver. And that's all. I know that was a lot. If you all have any questions, feel free to reach out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Gabe. That was yeah. amazing. Um, Mike has a couple questions about <laughs> Yeah, Gabe, that was a lot. Um, I have a few. First of all, um, I, do you have these written down somewhere? Because was you went through a lot. Do you mind sending us like some things? So yeah. I maybe you refer to this a little bit later as well. Yeah, I, I can definitely uh, compile it into a Word document and I'll just uh, upload it to our SharePoint. If you don't mind. And then I'll try to keep yeah. some of these um, questions very brief. Um, so what was the, so I remember <clears throat> you talked about through, this is the work plan, um, faculty senate, and this might be a re-question because I know she's our kind of correspondent with the faculty senate, but what was the consensus they came to at the end of that meeting when they dragged um, Provost Tatum into? Did the, uh, the trustees hear anything about that or what is the trustees plan yeah. going forward to address the issue? Yeah, so a lot of that is within like that 3-3-4-4 three, three, uh, four, four plan and how will that look at the university, like what money will be needed for that, uh, for that program. Um, and. Uh, and uh, it was just like a, a lot of data uh, was missing within that. And like I said, a lot of it was like um, a correlational data and not causation. And so that was a one big argument that was, well, not argument, but one big theme that came up was, um, is a 3-3 actually the reason that students are more successful or what's the actual factor that students are more su successful? And so basically there was no consensus um, except that it's like, this is kind of where we're at. It, it was just brought up to the table, like uh, uh, so that other trustees could know like what's going on and what's like in the works and stuff. Um, but they did request like more information, more data, um, and and they just want to know like um, yeah, uh, just more data before uh, before making any like full decision of of bringing uh, that workload to a three three. But like I said, right now there is still that option that some uh, programs are doing the three three option um, a model. Um, and it's working, and so there's there's just a lot of moving parts right now um, that still need to get figured out. Okay, thank you, Gabe. Um, I will compile the rest of my questions in email and send that out to you and the entire council. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. All right, say cab, uh, Stephanie, then Mike. Hey, so we had our meeting today. Um, it was more so just like conversational based. We didn't really do that much um, voting other than, no, we didn't really do that much voting other than voting on our new vice president, um, who will be Aaron, I believe, from CU Denver. Um, and then talking about, I believe, our tri-institutional event that will be coming up where our community can kind of meet our SGAs more informally, kind of just chill, hang out, um, and figuring out logistics for that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and then we also talked about, again, kind of just focusing more on making our student union more student union-esque um, and talking about reestablishing places or reprioritizing 
space is dedicated just for students. Um, I think that's something that I'm going to be taking a little bit more serious this semester um, since, again, I am involved in Greek life and hearing that one of our Greek organizations on campus locker got broken into and their stuff was stolen um, kind of hit me a little bit more personally. So um, we're definitely going to be thinking about that. Um, and if you guys have any ideas regarding it, again, reach out to Mike or myself. Um, and then in regards to the board of directors position, I was unfortunately unable to give any kind of updates during the board meeting just because their executive session lasted an hour and a half. And they went ahead and just disregarded um, the updates that would be preceding that. So I was unable to do that, but we will get to do that next time. Um, and then all, also, so you all are aware, um, we were unable to present our bylaws to the board as well, just because we did have an emergency meeting and decided that we would continue to work on them. Um, so if you guys, again, have any kind of um, suggestions about how we can better reflect our student body in our bylaws and better serve them as a tri-institutional committee, please let Mike or myself know. Thank you, Stephanie. You did, um, you basically hit all the points. Um, one thing I really want to hit home is that on these bylaws, um, I heavily requested that we have some with student affairs experience from each institution come and represent at those bylaw rewrites. So the reason we halted our bylaws was because it was kind of just students and then two representatives from AHEC who wrote the majority of it. Well, I want, and then there, in the last second, um, people who has a student fair experience kind of came in and like, oh crap, what are we doing? So um, I'm suggesting that this body either send Armando or someone with student affairs experience to those meetings. Um, they're gonna be most likely every Friday at, or every Friday at 10 a.m. So. This shouldn't take long, but um, the faster we can do this, or it does not need to be Armando, but just someone I can kind of call on to kind of help represent MSU because I can only do so much. Thank you, Mike. On to the budget committee with Mike. Oh, dang it. Okay, so, um, oh, did Gabe have a question? Gabe Please, Gabe, a question. Go, ahead. go ahead, Gabe. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I just have a quick, a quick question uh, for SACAP. I was wondering if either of you know anything about like, the AHEC master plan um, and the looking into of like governance uh, between like AHEC and the three institutions since, since there's like no formal um, governing structure or like decision-making structure within the three, the four institutions, including AHEC. So I was wondering if, any, if either of you know any information on, on that. Could you please repeat yeah. um, if we have any information on what was that? Yeah, on the on, on like the uh, AHEC uh, master plan for 2024. Oh, um, oh. And, and looking into like other uh, governing structure that AHEC has with the universities. Yep. So if you're referring to the master plan committee, um, we're still looking for someone to chair that, unfortunately, because our representative or our chair for that ended up resigning oh. because he's pursuing some more professional development opportunities towards his career, which is great. Um, so I don't really know, um, unfortunately. Um, and then in, in regards to like some kind of formal governance between AHEC and the tri our institutions here at Auraria, it seems to be like there really isn't anything. The best way that I could probably answer that would be that we did um, end up adding into our bylaws a policy advisory committee that would be chaired by myself. Um, but I'm not sure if we even brought that into effect. It's kind of just there since, again, we haven't been able to solidify our bylaws. So it's a little bit complicated, but there really doesn't seem to be much to my knowledge other than, I guess, a SACAB and communicating with our ex officio um, or officio. Amber, so, and she's going to be applying for another position here soon, so there doesn't really seem much. Um, can I add something to that? Um, I, I've actually been on that planning steering committee for the past few weeks now. Um, I took over that as um, when Trevor left. Um, yes, we met and I did all the interviews for a new, the, the contractor essentially that's going to upgrade the campus to Raria 3.0. We met all the applicants. And um, we voted on one, I believe it's public now, I believe it's like sake or, so, or something um, that is with the chosen contractor. Um, so they're now we're just going to 
kind of meet and compile a budget for them and see what they kind of thought think next as well. So yeah, I'm on that committee currently and most likely I'll be on that committee to the end of the semester. So awesome. Thank you. Okay, on to Paul. For the sake of time, I just have a quick question, Mike. You feel free if you don't have an answer now to tell me after. Um, do you have a hard date for when you're completing those bylaws? Um, my goal is to get them done by the end of the month. Okay. Well, we don't have a solidified date. We don't, no, but that's my goal. At least, Appreciate hopefully. you both. Thank you. Right. Sustainability Committee, Taylor, then Alex. Oh, we hadn't even touched Budget Committee yet. I just love talking, apparently. Um, budget committee. Um, a lot of the budget committee stuff will be brought up in a resolution for the today. I do have a question for Dan, though, because this is kind of close to the BRC committee. Um, and this is not to call you out or anything, Dan, but I just need to know, um, are you able, because so, I didn't get a response from you, um, BRC meets every week um, from, what was it, I believe 10 to 12? Or it, it's in the middle of state cap, so I can't, I can only meet for half of it. Are you able to meet for that 11 to 12 period on the BRC committee? Because because we're such, uh, Gabe knows a little bit more, because the university is such in a hole with their budget um, in the red. This BRC committee is meeting every week until probably May, I think. So that's my question to Dan. Are you able to make these meetings? If not, I'm going to need someone else to be on that, be on there with me. When you start, um, go ahead and try to find somebody else that can be on it. Um, I have. I, I really can't make it because I have to be able to do some homework, you know, at, at that point. Um, so is anybody else willing to take that spot on? I see Paul has his hand up. Paul, I'd be, I'd be happy to uh, take that spot, Mike. And you said that was 11 to win on is that Fridays? Yes. So um, I will forward you the invite. Um, I can usually make the nine or was it the the first half, but then say cab runs to the second half of it. So um, let me just get right now it is from 10 to 12. That's usually and it's in the caveat. So if you want to join there, I usually join virtually from the office. So um, I will. Virtual. Yeah, I will get I will be in contact with um, uh, the, the person, the kind of secretary who runs that and um, I will sort of make the adjustment. OK, thanks, Mike. Right. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. I appreciate it. Pan out the details you. offline if we could, please. We're running way behind um, sustainability committee. Thank you. Um, today, me and Mike met with Cassie from ASCP. Um, we discussed that ASCP, they will be coming to our next Friday meeting to connect with James Mejia on student housing, since I think it, it is a priority of students and us that this housing, whatever it comes to be, it needs to be sustainable. Um, I also want to point out that the Earth Week is coming up in April, and I would like all of us to go do this river cleanup. It's a very exciting team bonding activity. Um, that's all I have. Mike, did I miss anything, do you think? Um, no, but the stuff will, um, yeah, we will send out uh, once we get the packages as well. And then we did briefly mention um, that we as SGTSAC can sponsor some events through AACP, some kind of events in the Tivoli. Um, so um, you might see some bills coming up shortly of how we can sponsor some uh, sustainability events in the Tivoli. There was also um, a quiz, a, a survey we wanted to send out on social media. Um, yeah, but other than that, on to the Judiciary Committee with James. All right, thank you guys. Uh, so first off, the Judiciary Committee had its first meeting uh, yesterday at 3-3. I will quickly go over what we discussed. First, we are crafting our own little judiciary structure. Uh, this was mostly me wanting to make sure that the next council doesn't have to figure out how this system works next year and waste more time trying to figure it out. Uh, nothing will be made finalized uh, within the committee. It will obviously be proposed to you guys to ensure that this is something that is OK for judiciary to take care of. Uh, most of it falls under the guidelines of the fifth and sixth amendment. Uh, next, Mike last week brought up a disc, uh, complaint system. If you ever have an issue with a member on the council and you want to bring it to the judiciary committee's attention, uh, the way I just decided to do it was super simple and easy is direct messaging. And that means if you have an issue with anyone on the council, you direct message any member of the committee. So obviously, if you have an issue with me, you can direct it to Chad or Gabe. Uh, lastly, we discussed the uh, Paul's resolution to address accountability violations. We also were thankful to have Thomas Raglan, Associate Dean for Student Accountability and Care, join us uh, on that call. Um, he basically advised us that given the fact that we have given 
Alan Williams up until the end of February to complete his recommendations as per the accountability committee's uh, final vote from the council. It would be uh, he was basically advising us not to vote yes on this resolution. And that is it from the Judiciary Committee. Thank you, James. On to public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? OK, well, we're going to take a five minute break then in case anyone comes for public comment. Enjoy your bathroom break. DJ Stephanie.
All right. I would like to make a motion that we use the remaining 10 minutes of public comment for the continuation of business. I second that motion. Awesome. Um, is there anybody opposed to? Wonderful. And then just a side note for any members of the public that do want to speak during this 3 to 315 block, you do take priority. So we will uh, halt business if a member of the public does come in during that time. All right. Um, wonderful. I'll take the floor real quick for PR update. The uh, just business as usual in the PR committee. Um, one thing that I would like to motion as well is I would like to remove or rescind um, CR 22-15, the memorandum of official communications that we wrote up. Um, I feel like this, this, this memorandum uh, is not conducive for our relationship with uh, Met Media, um, whether it's the Metropolitan or Met TV, uh, and I would like to start building bridges with, uh, with our uh, with our and within our school. I second the motion. I'm sorry. Can we get a a summary of this resolution? Um, I can read it out super quick. Yeah. Um, it basically states that uh, any request for comment from SGTSAC must be made in writing and emailed to uh, student advocacy at msudenver.edu and designated members of the council. A response period of three regular business days is required for response. Regular business days are defined as 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday to Friday. Um, basically, we're, we're this this memo outlined exactly how the, the uh, uh, Metropolitan or Met TV would need to communicate with us. And I realized it creates a lot of barriers for them to do any sort of coverage on any of the ongoings of the council. I see. Okay. Um, is anyone opposed to this? Okay. Wonderful. So moved. It is rescinded. On to SAB. Taylor and James can go first. Uh, so SAB continues to hear its presentations from the different programs. So I want to thank obviously TSAC, the theater department, and the C2 hub for bringing their presentations today. Um, and we will be continuing our presentation uh, hearings next Friday. Anything else today? Yeah, I wanted to mention um, theater asked for a medium increase, C2 hub asked to stay flat, and SGTSAC asked for a substantial increase. Um, I also want to point out who will be at the next SAB presentations will be campus event funding, music activities, GITA, and the Auraria Early Learning Center. Yes, James. Uh, there is one thing I wanted to bring up real quickly that the theater department brought to us. Our attention is that they, like many of us, are trying to find a better way to get the word out to students about the various events that happen on campus. And currently, the only like system wide program there is is President Davidson's personal one. Um, so I think that's something that as a council, we should try to strive to improve. So that way all programs on this campus can get the word out for any of their events or opportunities that they want to spread to students. Thank you, James. Um, Dan, you have a question. Yes, um, when you say substantial increase that we requested, can what does that look like and what can you share that? Um, it. I can share it, but does someone who presented today with TSAC want to? Uh, we asked for over 100% um, of our budget, or basically for over double of the budget that we have uh, allocated right now. So like 430,000? Mm -mm -mm. No, like it was a third more. I can add to, I can add to that. So was um, from our original budget, we asked for um, $155,000. That was the added on. So we'd have about 200. And 280. Something. About so for next semester. That's okay. yeah. Thank you. Yes, I also wanted to give a shout out to thank you so much to Re and Chad for presenting today. It was very wonderful, if I do say so myself. Um, on to the policy advisory committee, Re. Hello. I um, am happy to report we had our meeting yesterday and uh, just a few things going on. If I can just recap, Joe Foster, who's the director of veteran student services, is putting together a policy that has to be university wide that talks. It's an official policy required um, 
by the Department of Defense about how we return money that's unused to veterans. So we're going to have to work on that. That's something completely new that we've never done before, but it's a requirement. They are still, as of last August, working on that university closure policy only because senior leadership has gotten involved and they want better definitions of what essential faculty means and how they need to be involved when there's a closure and why. So that's still underway. Um, and importantly, Provost Tatum has started an AI discussion, and Dr. Sean Schaefer, who's the Assistant VP of Curriculum and Policy Development, is looking for one of us to play a part in an AI discussion and engage in that and kind of give a student voice. Is anybody interested in being that person? Yeah. Paul? Yeah, anybody? when is it? There is no time set yet, but they are really interested in having someone from TSAC. Yeah, I'd love to be that person. Okay. That's all from that. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Back to Rhea again for Faculty Student Affairs Committee. Sorry. So um, with the Faculty Senate, we've, of course, put together, a, um, I put together a PowerPoint based on one that Chad and Mike and Dan had put, had used previously, and we have been approved for the faculty Senate meeting in, on March 1st. I'm going to try to share my screen. I am really looking for all of you to look through this handbook. Faculty Senate has asked us to give them feedback on this, on this part of their handbook that talks about their responsibilities in teaching and what that looks like in the classroom, in trying to be more mindful and more inclusive towards students of all backgrounds, and just giving them our thoughts. And so Taylor's already put a lot of great information in here for them to be mindful of. And I have sent you guys an email with that link. Um, if you don't know where it is, of course, it's on our OneDrive and under TSAC committees. And then I have Faculty Senate. I put a new file. You'll see my name by it. Please, if you can, in this next week, get in there and just add some comments for me. And then I'm going to send that back to Barbara with the Faculty Senate for them to review as they approve this. Yes, sir. Can I ask real quick what the time for the Faculty Senate meeting on March 1st is, if you have it? If not, you can. We don't have it yet. Okay. Um, we're going to submit the PowerPoint. I just will tell you that what I would really hope is that as many of us as possible turn up to this, but the goal is we only have a limited window. That's why they're making us go in March and not in February. They're very behind on a number of items, and I would hope our two co-chairs would lead the discussion, and we would be there to introduce ourselves, talk about how we want to survey um, the students in each department and what kind of process that'll take look like and Qualtrics surveys, um, but then have our, um, our two co-chairs really speak to it but all of us put our faces out to them. Thank you. Rhea, I also wanted to point out, Alex said that he could um, do that position you're talking about in the chat. With the AI yeah. Alex wants, Alex wants to, to too? In the chat, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Awesome. Um, on to the Indigenous Student Resource Committee, Naomi and Dan. Um. Yeah, we had like a really productive, I think, um, conversation this last weekend, and we're trying to focus on student engagement and getting them to, um, you know, just come to us with those problems and um, seeking those resources that they need so we can get to them. So we're going to focus on making a presentation and then work on taking that to the various uh, classes that are pre-approved uh, for like a little quick minute, five, quick five minute present, five to ten minute presentation. Um, on the resources that we have available for them, um, what they can come to us for, and just how we can get involved with them and take some uh, if they want to like come give us advice on how to do that as well. Um, we also spoke on um, doing some civil engagement around ICWA as well um, and trying to make sure that we can uh, correctly advocate for the Indigenous community within and without uh, and outside of the university as well. Um, and also possibly collaborating with some faculty or for some staff or faculty, one of the two, um, 
to also potentially look at like recruitment as well of more indigenous staff in some way here at MSU Denver as well to attract and make the students feel like they have a sense of community um, of their culture as well here on campus. So, yeah. Also, I'd like to add a little bit. Um, we did go over a resolution that we are writing. I don't think we brought it to the table yet, but we were working on that um, uh, a resolution for funding for the powwow. So we did meet for several hours this week or maybe last week and this week both. Hey, Dan, um, that's actually been passed, so we're good. We presented it and passed it last Friday. Oh, thanks for letting me know. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, check your phone. I put it in the text. My bad. <laughs> Alex, you have a comment? Yeah, I, um, I was at the Indigenous Resource meeting this last weekend, and I know uh, something we had talked about that I think would be really beneficial is this was this was Naomi's idea is to have um, essentially an indigenous a house for the indigenous students, much like there's an honors house, um, which I think would be really beneficial for the student success. Oh yeah, and uh, I would also like to thank Mike. Thank you, Alex, as well for putting that out. I completely forgot about that. Um, thank you, Mike, for showing up to our meeting and just kind of giving us some advice on the budget and what's a realistic um, lookout for like events and stuff that we want to show as well. Um, and to note on that housing thing, um, just a little background information. Um, we, amongst other minorities here on campus as well, um, there are a lot of us that don't have a space. And I like this. Stephanie here is also trying to provide a space specifically for all students. So um, this one, I'm just trying to take a little bit more personal. Um, but yeah. Thank you all. Uh, any open floor announcements or updates for the council? Going once, going twice. Wonderful. Uh, yes. Show me some. All right. Yeah, I got a few quick updates. I'll make them quick on account of the time and whatnot. Um, so. Uh, the first I want to mention is I have a student that's reached out to me. Uh, he started what's called the Auraria Across Disability Alliance. It's a group for uh, advocacy for disability rights as well as for community building for uh, for disabled folks and disability advocates. And so I wanted to really in extend an invitation for anybody on this council. I know we have some disability advocates on this council and I know we we all know some people. And so if you know somebody that's interested in getting into this kind of work and we want to help get registered the chapter here at a metro, we want this to be tri-institutional is the idea. The student I'm talking with is Corey Hecker of UCD doing a lot of good advocacy on this, um, running this into a few hurdles at UCD. I figured we could help with the MSU portion of this. And so please, after the meeting or at some point, shoot me a message if you're interested in getting involved on that. The other thing I would mention is earlier in the week, I made some solid inroads with my INTEP of the Black Student Alliance. And we talked about potential ways that the Black Student Alliance could, um, you know, make a request of some of that student org funding that we've got going unused. And so uh, just kind of encouraging that they explore the, the the funding options that our university provides for student orgs. And um, they had some really, really good ideas uh, that we were talking about. I think one of them was like book vouchers, you know, trying to help like meet accessibility barriers when it comes to buying textbooks and stuff like that. Kind of what we've all talked about previously. So I want to invite people to the ground floor on that too. Um, I'll be scheduling a meeting to talk with him about that later this uh, in these next couple of weeks. I still have to shoot that email. So um, and then the last thing I'd mention is um, I remain concerned about the fact that we're shut out of executive session during ABOD meetings when we're supposed to be some co-equal portion of the of, of of the campus, right? Shared governance, what? Shared governance when we're kicked out of a meeting where we're supposed to be a you know an equal part of the table doesn't seem like shared governance at all. So um, it troubles me. I think it should trouble you, and I think it's par partially why they were able to take Sidious Hub from the students and nothing happened. It's part of why, uh, you know, parking is able to go up more and more every year and there's little to no pushback. Um, and so I think we we should be mindful of the ground that we're seeding when it comes to the shared governance question on this campus because the students are feeling it. So that's all I got. Yeah. All right, advisors updates. 
Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Dr. Barone is at a conference today, so she could not attend. She sends her regards. Uh, a couple of things she wanted me to go over. So following up with the fee review committee that Taylor has spoke on earlier, uh, we received some word from the university that this is something that they would like for Taylor and Chad as coaches to sit on per their policy. It's supposed to be the president and VP of student government. Since we don't have a student government, the coaches are the ones who step in closest to that. So this is, it was verbatim said, this is not a recommendation for other people to step into that role. Um, was there conflict of time for for you two on that? Uh, yes, between school and work, I can't attend. Okay, and for you, Taylor? I'm just busy, and I know that last year that wasn't an issue. That it was an issue? It was not an issue. It was me and Savannah last year, the board of trustee and just a regular council member. Gotcha. Okay. I will forward that the there's a conflict of in time for you both to see like, hey, like we make our amends for this, but that is something that I was told by the university and I understand the, the purposes of shared governance, but in purposes of work, especially at this university, there's battles you fight and there's battles you succumb to. Um, so I will fight for you both on that to see how we can make this work. Um, moving on, I want to apologize again. On behalf of HR for MSU with the whole stipend thing that has apparently gotten resolved. If you have not gotten paid today and if you have not gotten paid by Sunday, please send me and Dr. Brown an email so we can follow up. I know a couple of y'all have gotten emails saying that payments have been processing or coming through. Um, I have approved everyone. Apparently they're coming through invoices now, so I have approved everyone's pretty much invoice so now it's just accounting doing their job um i wanted to give a quick shout out to to re and chad for the sap presentation today we hope that sap can see the need for our students and for that substantial ask that we are asking for um other than that i'm still trying to play catch up y'all so if there's anything that is immediate need please let me know uh message me on Teams, send me an email with whatever follow-up you need um and i will get to that but any i think that is all do you have a question? Oh. Um, this you just reminded me when you said the HR thing. Um, I wanted to just make the quick um, mention to any other counselors. If this lapse in the paycheck is um, keeping groceries out of your fridge or gas out of your gas tank and it's like you're down to zero, um, please talk to me in confidence and I'd be happy to help with that. So. All right, um, we will now move into uh, old business A, resolution to reconsider. Um, Paul. Thank you, Chad. So um, item A here is it's called a resolution to reconsider the decision to pardon all violations of the bylaws present in the Fifth Amendment passed earlier this January. Long title, but it's exactly that. Um, and I'll just read it here. Whereas section one of the Fifth Amendment it was passed in early January states, all past violations of the bylaws and rules will be forgiven with the passing of this amendment. Whereas the accountability work being conducted within the council is meant to address the work of the council and a majority of that work took place last semester. Whereas in order to address violations of the bylaws uh, from last semester, it says next here, that's a typo. Um, from last semester, it's necessary we, reveal the clause, uh, we repeal the clause in the fifth amendment section one which erroneously cleared all previous violations. And it quotes it again. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved that in order that we may carry out the task of accountability, the decision to forgive all previous violations of the bylaws and rules is repealed and will not impact the council's ability to pursue accountability for actions taken last semester. And that's it. I'll call on myself. Um, I would like I'd like to make a motion to limit discussion to 10 minutes. I would okay. second that. All right. Is anybody opposed? All right, 10 minutes on the clock starting now. So and then oh, Dan, go ahead. Um this last therefore, Paul, is that saying so it's saying we're gonna base it, uh can you elaborate on exactly what that means? So basically if we're forgiving we're repealing all of the forgiven violations of rules repealed, but it will not impact the council's ability to pursue accountabilities taken from last semester. So that means like they'll. So you reread that in a, in a, um, in a 
in a way that alters its meaning. I'll say what it, essentially what this does, and I wrote it so it would like clarify it. So I'm sorry if it was confusing, but um, essentially the decision to pardon all violations will be repealed and that decision will not have impacted our ability to pursue accountability. And so if in the future we want to, you know, say, oh, we need to address something that happened last semester, someone couldn't oh, tell you, yeah. well, all violations have been forgiven. You cannot address this violation because that was part of the ones that were forgiven per this amendment. Thanks for the clarification. Naomi. Uh, so uh, something to say and also point of clarification. So um, point of clarification would be, uh, so if something had happened last semester, it would be up to the council to bring it to the accountability committee and to be like, hey, this happened last semester. Do we think it's worth addressing or like, like is, am I correct? Like this gives it opens up the option to that again. Yeah, there would be no fundamental alteration of the other processes laid out by our uh, our bylaws. Um, this is just a single change in the notion of repealing all previous violations. OK, but otherwise um, the process would be the same. All right. I think I personally disagree with this just because like it does make sure that we're holding accountable like those aspects if we need to address them. But like I also only see and everyone knows what I'm talking about. One thing that does need to be addressed. But I think other than that, I think everyone's like made really good progress um, from any semesters with um, SGTSAC. So, yeah. OK, on the mic. Hello, and um, let me just kind of address I was the main writer of what of Amendment 5, what you're chatting about. The reason I put that in there, and I mean, y'all can debate this all you want. I'm just speaking to my reasoning for putting it in there. We came into SGTSAC with no accountability structure, no way to hold ourselves accountable. I spoke with the co-chair from last, last year, and that's something they fought for, which kind of got defeated. There's more than like one or two opposition. There was like half the council was opposed to it because it was a – it was a overreach on shared governance. That's what they, those excuses I used last year. So that was the reason why um, I chose to put that in there and like, in a sense, pardon anyone. If we didn't, we didn't have a structure in place to hold each other accountable, and that's the fault of the founders of TSAC, um, I kind of hold that to them. So that's just given kind of a clarification why I wrote that in there. Thank you. Um, Paul can respond, and then we're going to do Chad. Okay. Chad, then Paul. Cool. Uh, I'm also against this. <clears throat> uh, I, I think it's unfair and inappropriate to, uh, to hold individuals accountable to rules um, that they did not know about previous. Um, and to then retroactively start holding people accountable, is uh, it, it just seems um, underhanded. Thank you, Chad. On to Paul, then Stephanie, then Naomi. Sure. I, uh, I'm in support of this resolution, not only as its author, obviously, right, I'm going to support it, but um, in part because it, it's the simple ask that we hold ourselves accountable to the rules and the bylaws that we knew were here upon joining. When we when we joined the SGT SEC, yeah, you know, the accountability structure that we received on coming in was inadequate. We had like the accountability logs weren't working, right? So we had to re revisit the drawing board and figure out how we do things differently, and we've done that. Right. But now it's like, how do we apply the actual accountability? Like now that we know that something is violated a rule or a bylaw, what do we do? And I feel like, you know, well, this wasn't your intention, Mike. You have good intentions when you write this stuff. That's why you write it. Um, it was it's so broad that it forgives stuff that shouldn't be forgiven. And so it's like I say we keep the rest of that excellent bill, but we narrow the scope of this pardon. So we're not pardoning stuff that may need to be addressed. And it's not like, you know, we were, we were all made, uh, we all of us uh, were given a, access to, were given copies of the member's handbook, the constitution, and it, at the time, the communal document. Um, yeah, they were long, kind of hard to read, but I read them and everybody, but, you know, it's, it's like ignorance of the law is no excuse, you know, and we're not really even talking about like the law. We're talking about some basic rules of the position we'd, we'd all applied for, were elected to, um, and are ultimately accountable to. So like the question of accountability is like, are we gonna, like, are we are we ever gonna hold someone accountable for a violation or is it is it all, you know, like there comes a time where the rubber needs to hit the road with accountability. And I think that, you know, we've been more than gracious with this. Uh, and this first bill is just, a, again, a simple ask that we 
address things point that happened last semester. Could we go um, with the, um, excuse me? Point of personal privilege. Could we uh, kind of wrap up a little bit so we could get to the rest of the roster here? Oh, sure, sure. Um, yeah, I was just going to, gosh, it was a sharp halt uh, in my, my thought process there. Um, but yeah, um, I don't think it's within, I don't think it's right that any of us pardon violations of the rules from last semester. I don't think that's cool. I think if any student on the okay. campus heard about what happened last semester and then found out that we were going to write it off with a single line, they'd be ashamed. And I, I think we should reflect on how that's going to look if we don't actually act. So I, I would urge that people support this. It's a simple ask. It doesn't even really, this isn't even us taking accountability measures. It's just saying that we should. Okay, thank you, Paul. Now we have Stephanie, Naomi, Chad, Dan, then James. Thank you. So mine will be super quick here. Um, I like this amendment or I don't know what we're doing this kind of addition um, because there would be a discrepancy with Alan Williams. Um, we did say that we would forgive all discrepancies from last semester and we're still continuing with that. I do think that we need to hold him accountable to what he did. And if we wanted to do that, that means we hold everyone else accountable if we see fit. I don't think we would be bringing up other things that we didn't see were relevant or were major violations. And if you did, then you have that freedom to do that. But I don't think it's fair that we kind of harp on Alan Williams and then we don't hold the same kind of energy for the rest of the council. And I think that should be, um, I think that should be distributed amongst everyone. Thank you, Stephanie. On to Naomi, then Dan, then James. Mm -hmm. We have three minutes. Uh, thank you, Stephanie, for addressing that. Um, that he, that's what I was uh, kind of to piggyback off of. Um, I don't see how we are not adult enough to have to, to take the consequences of our actions. I think that we are all reasonable people here, and whatever that we ask of each other, we're more than willing to like fulfill on that. Even for Alan, like we're just you know um, asking for points of education. Um, you know, I feel like we're very reasonable, and I don't think that it's an unreasonable ask to go back and have us be held accountable for our actions in the past. Um, because you know, like uh, Chad said, maybe we just weren't aware of them enough. Um, but now that we have the opportunity to be aware of them um, more consciously on a regular basis, we can now hold ourselves accountable with pride. And I feel like that's a leading by example thing as well um, to show the students that's why we are leaders is because we choose to do so. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Naomi. On to Dan, then James. Yeah, so um, in the name of restorative justice, I, I, I don't necessarily support this here thing just because, you know, anything retroactive, it's going to be hard to to figure out what, what has been done and, and what if all of a sudden, hypothetically, you know, people have been keeping a track of who's done what and who hasn't, and then all of a sudden it's James and the Judiciary Committee is slammed with uh, figuring out and deciphering what is, you know, punishable or not. Um, also, um, yeah, I guess that's what I have specifically related to this. So in the name of restorative justice, I'm not sure this actually is that. I mean, I granted, you know, we should all know the rules and be held accountable. Back backtracking and and if, if there is like that hypothetical that I said, if there is someone keeping track, uh, you know, a lot of individuals may, may, may um, be forced to face the Judiciary Committee and then James backlogged and then being able to not focus on his school as much or um, his other uh, committee responsibilities. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. On to James. So should I, okay. I'm pretty much against this resolution for old amendment for one reason is because, you know, like everyone said, yes, we didn't really have the greatest accountability structure, but everything that we went after Alan for was addressed via the accountability committee and we gave him what he has to do. And the thing that we went after him for was not our governing documents or bylaws. He was charged with violating the MSU Denver student, student Code of Conduct. So this is not really going to change anything. I get it. We don't like some of the language he uses in the chat, but he does have a right to criticize us, just as we all have done to each other, to this council, and to former council members in the past. I just think that this defeats the purpose of the accountability committee. And it opens us all up for attack just to get at one person. And that is time. We have time for one motion if we want it. Uh, 
All right. Motion that we call the question. Is there a second? Well, I mean, the, sorry, I'm sorry to talk out of turn. All right, we have a second from Stephanie. Um, we will call the question. Uh, okay, we're going to go um, counterclockwise as we have been doing. Um, no clarification. Yes. So this is a resolution, but it's changing in amendments. So it, does it require two thirds because it's our constitution? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. Okay, good point of clarification. Um, <laughs> Mike. <sighs> yes. James. No. Paul. Yes. Chad. No. Taylor. Yes. Oh, three. Sorry. No. Stephanie. Yes. Um, Dan. No. Alex. Alex. No. Gabe. Abstain. Then Naomi, if you are here or in chat. OK, um, going once. Going twice and sold. That is an abstain. Thank you. Um, no, now we tally the results. Um, the resolution fails. The resolution has failed. OK, on to old business section B resolution to address Thanks. accountability violations. Paul. Thank you. I, um, you know, we, I introduced this last week um, and a little erroneously because, you know, we can't address what Alan did last semester, right? We just can't. What happened was forgiven explicitly in the Fifth Amendment, Section 1. And, uh, you know, I, and I'm not going to, I won't read what we heard last week and I won't read it again here, especially considering that even if it were to pass, it would be contrary to the notion of forgiving all violations from last semester. So, um, you know, I won't read it unless someone motions to have it read. I think that'd be a waste of our time. Um, but uh, yeah, I would, I would motion that maybe we limit discussion on this to 10 minutes so it doesn't take out the rest of our meeting. Second. Is there anyone opposed? opposed? Yes, yes, I am. This needs to be debated. Okay, so there is a motion that has been seconded. We will now move to vote. Um, this is, to, this is a motion to limit discussion to oh, 10 minutes. Perfect. Mike. Mike. Yes. James. Yes. Paul. Yes. Ree. Yes. Chad. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Dan. No. Alex. Abstain. Gabe. Yes. All right. Is there a question, Mike? No. All right. Okay. Discussion is now limited to 10 minutes. Um, start the stack Mike, with Paul. Mike, then Paul. Okay. And um, this is just a thing I'll say. Um, one thing I can do, and I do see that as being a little bit of oversight, Paul. Is I don't mind working with an amendment um, to the fifth fifth amendment um, that carves out a section that says so. Like it's as you say, it sounds kind of like a blanket pardon, but I don't mind writing something that says uh, to the tune of except prior accountability committee or like the formation of accountability committee. I think that'll solve a lot of the issues that we're facing here. Because I mean, I believe everyone in this council is still under the purview that um, Alan Williams is on probation until the end of February. Um, and then if he does not complete his purview, then it will he'll be kicked off at the end of February. Um, I believe that's still the motion on the floor. That's still the motion in, in, on the decision of this council. So um, but if you want to help want to work with that, I don't mind making that slight adjustment to the Fifth Amendment. Thank you, Mike. On to Paul, then Dan, then Gabe. Yeah, just in response to that, I, um, you know, if it accomplishes materially what this last resolution describes, we can use whatever language you think is best. Um, happy to work with you on that. Um, and I'll keep it a lot shorter this time so I don't do what I did in this last discussion. Um, I think it's critically important that we reflect on why it is that the accountability committee was created. It wasn't just because of some 
school conduct violations that he was charged with. And as I understand it, you know, the department at the school that's supposed to handle these violations never got a report. And so it doesn't sound like he's been charged with anything except by our accountability committee. They don't really charge people with things. I, um, I, I think that when you talk about genocide apologia, genocide denial on a, on a campus that has a land acknowledgement statement and claims to be for equity and racial justice, um, they're not just words, it's not just disagreement. It's like the opening up of a question of the humanity of a whole section of our population, a section of our population that was genocidally displaced. And, you know, people talk about racial justice, people talk about equity and all that, but this is it. Like when, 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 when it actually happens in our spaces, it's a question of what we do about it, right? I think it's the easy thing to do is nothing, is to kind of treat it like a small thing, see if it blows over. The difficult thing to do is to treat it uh, treat it as the threat that it is. It's a threat. This kind of language isn't just, these aren't just words, right? Um, you know, we've all, we were all in kindergarten, probably heard thoughts become words, words become actions, right? Actions become who we are. Um, and so I really do think we should reflect on the nature of what was said, um, especially around our Indigenous Peoples Day resolution and consider the, like the gravity of that in our lack of like taking a response on this. Um, and I think, you know, those of you who are concerned with the timeline on this, that we're somehow jumping the gun, uh, he has till the end of February. It takes four weeks to schedule these courses with EDA. And as I understand it, he hasn't even dipped his toe in the water. I told the chairs earlier, uh, or just spoke to Chad specifically, I said, if if I, if I under, if, if it comes back to me that a call has been placed to Gita to schedule those classes today, I'll rescind this, this amendment, uh, this resolution. Um, but there's been no indication that he's undertaken this process, that he's taken it seriously or seen it as anything but some flippant attack to silence him. And so all of that is, enforcing, is informing why I'm doing this in this way. And I really do think we should take it seriously. All right, Dan. I motion to uh, table this until the end of February before Alan. So Alan, give Alan a chance to um, get, you know, get his classes done. Um, after talking with the uh, Thomas Ragland, the associate dean, um, kind of the way we went about it, it was starting with the harshest going down to the lightest, wasn't really in the name of restorative justice anyway. So I motion that we table this until the end of February. There's a motion on the table, or there's a motion to table this resolution. Is there a second? There is no second. We will continue with the stack. Gabe? Okay. Hello, everybody. Okay, so I I don't think um I'm a big fan of this resolution because of the fact that we like already had you know like like the accountability committee and we set that timeline until February and I think that we should stick to our word um as a council and stick to that timeline. Well, yes, I understand, you know, that um, these trainings re require time in advance and all that stuff. Well, that's, you know, 100% valid. We still gave Alan until the end of February. And, and I am 100% for sticking to our word. And yeah, because I definitely think um, that, we, that we still need to be fair and still give people like that chance that timeline that they had fully to to like to that full extent, right? Um, and that's just all I have to say. Yeah. On to Re. Thank you. I um believe that Gabe is correct that, you know, waiting and, and giving the time until the end of February is is what is the right thing to do. However, I also believe that what we've come up with, what the accountability um, group has come up with as a way to keep us all making sure that we are performing our roles as we were elected to do has not been followed since this was first brought out in November with meetings missed. Just because you can't vote, you can still come. The planning meeting you know, all a series of things that have happened for us to be continuing our work 
to advocate for students and to show up on these committees. Nothing has been done. So not only that, but the language and and um, hurtful actions, um, they all play a part in this. And I don't think we need a resolution now. The end of the month will suffice because we are being fair and we're making sure things are done in the correct way. So that's all I wanted to say. Dan, then Paul, we have three minutes. Yeah, I just want to say then, yeah, I mean, I understand not tabling it, although I think it should be tabled until the end. But if we're just if we can um, just go along with our initial word, just give him till the end of the month. Maybe he has reached out to Gita when I talked to Thomas Raglan yesterday. He was going to develop some sort of list of classes and where to go for him because Gita doesn't have all the classes. They have some classes, but then when it comes to cultural relevancy, there may be that in trio and some of these other places. And it's kind of, you know, convoluted as to where. Um, Alan should go. Not that I support what Alan said or or some uh, genocide. You know, I believe the genocide happened. Let's just put it that way. But what I'm saying is, I think we went with the initial end of February, and to just make this uh, removed from the council effectively or effective immediately. I mean, that opens this a precedent up that can be done to anybody if enough votes is you know gathered and uh, someone doesn't like or a group of people doesn't like an individual. Although. Yeah, so I second what Re and um, Gabe said. I think at least we should wait till February 28th or whatever date we set and uh, make the decision then to remove. Thank you, Dan. On to Paul. Thank you. Um, I just I wanted to highlight that the process has been incredibly like has been incredibly restorative in the side of restorative justice. This wasn't a quick move to politically repress a voice that people disagreed with. Alan was given multiple warnings, several like kind warnings say, hey, please, can we keep the chat civil? Hey, can we please not say that? Can we please like, please keep it professional? Hey, can we please like, and there were many, many, many stops around this road. It's not as though someone's isolated and targeted on an individual to isolate them, kick them off this council. It's not true. That's a mischaracterization and it's mischaracterization. It's going to continue to be lobbied no matter what we do if we try and take this accountable. The reason I got into writing this resolution was because I'm, I was not confident with the way that accountability is being handled on the council. Uh, for one, I made a motion uh, two meetings ago that we got a report back on Alan's progress so we could understand where it is because I hadn't heard much, hadn't heard anything. And I was concerned that he wasn't actually following through with any of this. Right. And, um, you know, the motion passed. We never got a report back. Right. That same week, I go to the accountability meeting accountability council meeting and everyone's supposed to be there but when people show up me and Gabe and we sit there and we talk about the concerns that we've talked about earlier that are in this resolution and so my during these these last few weeks my head's just spinning it's like you know I know we set that end of February date but here it is you know we understand it takes four weeks to set, schedule these classes the ways continuing to talk about them in the chat it seems to me like the process isn't isn't being taken taken seriously or undertaken and i don't like um you know i think at this point oh we are out of time uh, we have time for one motion and one motion only i motion we table this amendment that that motion has already been made um dan i can't remake a motion OK, I mean, it's going to fail anyway. I just figured you said one in one motion only. So so you're sorry. One second. I'm getting a point of clarity from Paul. Um, he's saying that when when time is put onto a resolution, traditionally, the uh, the question is called immediately following that time. So we will call the question again. This is a resolution to um, change our constitution, which needs a two thirds to pass. Um, so we will start with our voting. Counterclockwise. Let's allow for two minutes for um, the resolution to be seen. So I've got it in the chat only okay. section. It was sent yesterday about 26 hours ago. That's OK. I don't blame you if you didn't see it, um, but that's a good place to see it. And I just forwarded it. I just don't know if it's taking a moment to send.
if you'd like to have it read, that's also an option. That's like a page and a half, I think. Point of clarification. Yes, is, Mike. What is this changing in the Constitution? I don't think it's changing in the Constitution. This is a resolution. Yeah. This isn't change. So it's it's civil majority. Okay. Oops. Technical difficulties, everyone. No. Point of clarification. Um, I've consulted with the writer of the Constitution who happens to be sitting right next to me. I don't believe this changes anything in the Constitution. I don't think there's like a requirement for it. This is just a resolution. So I think it's a simple civil majority. I could be wrong, so I'm not like married to that. I mean, I think in order to remove somebody, we should at least have two thirds of the council because then what's that? I mean, that's just insane. If not, that's just my personal opinion. Hey, are we reopening this up for discussion? I'd be happy to because I have more to say on it. OK, I mean, I was against stopping discussion, but I just don't think we can. Re we should be able to remove people with less than two thirds of the vote. That's just my my opinion. Nothing against you, Paul. I just think that's absolutely absurd. OK, thank you all. Let's take a minute. A, mi a moment of quiet. Yes, please take a moment to review this in the chat. We are not opening discussion again. OK, um, we are back. I see Dan. Um, we're not doing further discussion. Are we reading the resolution that Paul just wrote? But if that didn't pass, then shouldn't Alan's actions be forgiven? Question. I, I don't know what. Yeah, that's different. If How is that different, Mike? As what different? If we if, 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 if Paul's yeah, resolution to to not hold people accountable, to, Paul just tried to pass an amendment that said basically we should not not forgive everybody in the past. So if that didn't pass, then shouldn't what you wrote the week before actually uh, keep Alan protected and all of that forgiven? No, that's not my intention in writing that. No, you back and forth. OK, well, your I'm going to make what? OK, thank Dan, you. Dan, hold on, please. I'm going to make a motion to table this since there is a lot of confusion and I yeah. don't feel comfortable voting on this right now. 
I Thank second you. this motion. So do I. Is anyone opposed? I am opposed to the tabling of this motion's vote. Okay, fair. But then we need uh, to open it up for discussion more because I'm not, this is crazy. I have clarification. No, we we're going to vote to table, table it, yes or no. Okay. Okay. Um, first, Mike. We're voting to table? Yes, yes. is to table, no is not to table. James? Yes. Paul? I believe there should be discussion before this vote to table, but uh, I oppose. Three? Yes. Chad? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Stephanie? Yeah. Dan? Yes. Alex? Yeah. Gabe? Yep. Uh, Naomi? Going once, going twice, and it is an abstain. Thank you. And the results are it has been tabled for next week. On to the next order of business. The amendment proposal, James. Uh, I would like to withdraw my amendment to give my colleagues who are having more pressing resolutions introduced today. So I will remove withdraw my amendment for today and have it reintroduced next week. So moved. On to resolution to schedule and fund elections. That's me. My name's on there. Thank you, James. It's lovely. Appreciate it. Um, can we bring this up, Kenny? I, there's a lot. To, and Dan, do you still have a hand? It's, 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 is it not sent to you? Do I need to send it to you? I can send it to you. No, I said it. My apologies. My hand was up for. Oh, no, no, no. Past. I'm looking. My, no, Dan, I'm looking for my thing. I'm, I'm just oh. going to look it up and pull it up. Where is my, my, my thing? There it is. All right, we're just going to share my screen then. That's what we're going to do. Yes, so share that one. Can we see? What did he say? There we go. Okay, so, so hello, everyone. So this is um, the Pokemon Schedule and Fund the Polls Act. This is a labor of love that has been many months of lovely discussions and work with people from the budget committee, the PR committee, general counselors, and our soon to be elections manager. So I will read this thoroughly because um, there's a lot of, this is a big, this is a big resolution. So abstract. <laughs> Elections are crucial to the continued success of SGTSAC with the passing of this resolution. The council will further its commitment to a well-structured and timely election process. This resolution will allow the elections manager to work with council members to create events surrounding elections and extend funding initialized in CR 22-13, that's the Pokemon, other Pokemon Act, whatever it's called. Uh, the elections timeline in this resolution runs parallel to the other student governments on this campus. Furthermore, further strengthening our commitment to collaboration with our neighbors. So let's go into the goals real quick. The goals of this resolution are to commission a new elections code and manual, hire an intern for elections, and empower our elections manager to run elections. So let's go to the timeline. And this, oh, there it is right there. So the following timeline will be presented for the MC Denver to host elections. This timeline was determined with representatives from the SGT SEC budget committee, the SGT SEC PR committee, the representatives from the Tri-Institutional Summit hosted by SACAB on the 27th of January 2023. This timeline would be concurrent with the timeline of the SGA elections of CCD and CU Denver with the intention of boosting voter engagement and polling marketing resources between three institutions. This resolution will act as an extension of the Pokemon Goes to the Poll Act. That's the one that was passed like last semester. So <clears throat> let's start first. And this is all purview to when Ch Chad gets um, through HR and their lovely workday process. But um, this is just the brain timeline from February 1st to March 1st. Um, our hired elections manager will work on writing the new code, which will be used by elections manager to run the 2023-2024 SGTSAC elections. The PR committee will work to work with the budget committee and the elections manager to put on events on the calendar. The SGTSAC budget committee will make sure events at this time are well funded. <clears throat> March 12th to April 2nd. Candidates running for trustee, SACAB, and SGTSEC counselor will announce their candidacy and begin their campaigning. This is when you get to announce your candidacy, all this stuff. And events previously planned, events previously planned um, in the prior time period will happen during this time. So then April 3rd to April 7th, voting week will open on April 3rd and close on April 7th. And then SGTSEC will launch a week-long get-out-the-vote campaign during this time. So... And then um, once elections close, the manager will work through the following week to calculate the results. Then April 10th through April 14th, um, that's when the elections will be announced in this timeline. 
April 15th to May, 15th to May 31st. Uh, this will be so the candidates have been announced or the winners of the election have been announced. Um, our term does not end until June 1st. So um, they will basically be shadowing us during this period. So moving on to funding my favorite part. Uh, the following budget system is comprised of three tiers of various budget options, a low, medium and high tier. And the following stipulations will be placed throughout all tiers. So rules of this tier process. The higher the tier, the more time the funding and the election team is allotted. SGTSAC must vote to approve of a tier increase. The elections manager will have a pool of hours to work from. As the tier gets approved, the hours will increase. The elections manager will oversee tracking time spent working on the elections. The advisors of SGTSAC will be responsible for approving the timesheets. Um, as per an additional motion by the council, each elections manager will be paid 18 per hour um, to be paid during these allotments. The use of allotted budget is up to the discretion of the elections manager and then all money not used goes directly back into the TSAC general fund. So let's get on to the three, three tier system. Man, I love Excel. So this is the low tier. This is where we would automatically start off of as. So um, and let me kind of just explain the process here. So um, I have accounted for an elections manager and an intern to work coinciding with that elections manager. So the elections manager during this tier to host our elections will be allotted 150 hours of time. So to do what is that from a planning to um, running the elections? And I've done the math on that. A uh, quick calculation times that by $18 an hour, though, total to $2,700. And then if you did the same thing with the intern, the intern gets about 50 hours. Um, that would be about $900. $900. And with the total being 3600 And then the budget for the low tier as well. Um, this is up to the discretion of, of the elections manager, but just taking a quick look, it'd be about um, $5,500, whether that's for merch, purchasing swag, um, booking event spaces, and then food. That's a big draw for people as well. So um, the total of this tier is at the bottom. would be about $9,000 to run our elections at the low tier. So um, say our elections manager needs some more time. We move on to the higher tier. So he needs a few more, like 50 more hours to run our elections. Uh, you do the same calculations. It gets you to 3600 um, and then I added some more hours to the intern, that'd be 75 hours. Um, and the total, that'd be around $5,000 to pay them. And then I did a small increase to their budget as well. Um, so that's about 67.50, give or take. So, and it's about $11,000 in total, almost 12. And then in this extreme notice that, you know, we need a lot more time to do these elections, then we increase it once more. Um, all these would have to be voted upon, by the way. So um, he gets 250 hours um, the intern will get 100 hours, and then their budget gets increased to eight grand. So we don't, and let me just make this clear, we're not adding on to their budget, we're just unlocking the other tier, so not adding like more. So, and it's all be about 1,400 or 14,000. Um, and then section five, this is the last section, is miscellaneous amendments. The office 307C will be cleaned and organized for the use of elections manager. The council will still have access to the use space to clear their duties. So that's the back office in our TSAC office. Um, that'd be mostly for him. Um, we clean it out and make sure um, all is accommodating for our manager. So I'm done. Thank you, Mike. Um, we're gonna open up the floor for discussion. We have Paul and me. I, I think this is excellent and um, I, I, I fully support it with one minor exception and would like to offer an amended form of the resolution. Uh, it is, it is Mike. And as we have discussed this, you all know this won't be a friendly amendment, but I, I uh, the amended version would strike Pokemon from the title. The large part of this, I like Pokemon myself, but I think that when we talk about the state of uh, civic engagement on our campus, it is dismal. And something we shouldn't treat too flippantly, because I think if people reflect on like what we're calling things, they might think we have a flippant attitude about the work we're doing. And uh, I think it may reflect poorly on some people who may not give it all the thought that we're just some fun and friendly people calling it Pokemon, schedule and fund the polls. So just a minor, minor change, just striking it from the name. Sure, why not? Yes. OK. Amazing. Thank you, Mike. Um, so I had one point of clear, I guess two points of clarification. Um, can I help, how can I help you, Taylor? OK, um, so is the elections manager and the elections intern pay the same amount? Yes, Wonderful. $18 an hour. Um, does 
having the title manager and intern create hierarchy. <laughs> so that's that's a full, I, that's not a question I'm going to answer. Um, maybe someone else can answer for me. Okay, I would say it does. You immediately have a dynamic of uh, subordinate and manager in that situation, and I think that we got to like you know recognize or work to work with that understanding and not necessarily ignore that. Um, I'm interested to hear what you were thinking, Taylor, okay, after that. Have them both be elections managers and one of them is just learning. Is that is that OK? Like the, yeah, the time, does the hours hours equivalent stay the same then? Like 50 hours, like do you do you meant, let me get just go back down here. We can say elections coordinator then. That's fine. I it's I will change that out before publishing this. Um, I will okay. be I, there's questions here so before yes. I answer that question. Go ahead. Armando, Gabe, then Stephanie. Per the voted whatever y'all did last year, elections manager was a job title that you gave me. So that's what's in Workday. So their official titles are both elections manager. Now, if one is training the other, that is a different story and will need to be flushed out because one is training the other. One does not have supervision and or hierarchy over the other, yet they are both elections managers. That's fair. I can just change the title of election manager number two in yeah. training. That's a friendly amendment I'll take. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Gabe, then Stephanie. I'm okay, too. Armando got it. Wonderful. Um, is there any other questions, comments about this um, piece of legislation? Paul? I just want a motion to call the question. I second. Anyone oppose? No, we're going to call the question now. Okay. Wonderful. Mike? Yes. James? Uh, yes. Paul? Yes. Bree? Yes. Chad? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Dan? Yes. Alex? Yes. Gabe? Yes. Naomi? Naomi going once, going twice, and sold. Unanimous. Unanimous. Wonderful. On to the next thing. Also, Mike with his Meet oh, the I... SGA's event, February 21st. Oh, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Hi, friends. Um, okay, so this is something that was so the Tri-Institutional Summit that was hosted this week. Um, this was an event um, that we came up with. Um, it's just to generally promote SGA in general. So um, we can do anything we want for this event. Um, I know CU Denver, like mentioned, oh, we could do a carnival. CCD could do their like Cotton Candy event. Um, my plan is to have SACAB foot a lot of the bill for like food and refreshments for the event. Um, so it's just, just something I want to put on the calendar and like officially sponsor. Um, also, I will add AHEC has a uh, marketing team. They plan on making a flyer for this as well. So um, this is just what I would like to put on Taylor and vote mixtures on the counter. It's officially sanctioned event for um, SGT Tech. Okay. Um, Paul has a question. So you said AHEC would be the ones making the flyer and just distributing it? Yes. So they're going to make a tri-institutional flyer. Meet the SGAs, kind okay. of have some enjoyments, refreshments. Um, I think we, we determined it'd be easier for them just to put something with our logos on it rather than like, let's spread the different flyers on campus. And uh, where would it be? It's be in the Multicultural Lounge on uh, the 21st. So that'd be next Tuesday, not next Tuesday, I'm sorry, two Tuesdays from now. Um, and then it'd be from like 12 to three. All right, last question. Yes, what's up? Do you know when they're gonna have that flyer out? Well, my goal is to, they have a pretty swift marketing team. So my goal is to have it out by Monday. Cool. That'd be fantastic. I, I just, the reason I ask all those questions is a lot of the events I've been to on in the Tivoli sometimes have been kind of sparsely attended. Yes. With the exception of our CMEI's lovely uh, student fair, student org fair. That was fantastic. So I just wanted to know that we we're advertising this adequately ahead of time so that it's well attended. Yes. And um, I have a meet, I have a SACAB sanctioned meeting Monday at 9 a.m. Anyone's allowed to join. That's been the SACAB office. We're going to um, discuss our budget and discuss how much food we're going to get for it and kind of 
iron out the details that will be um, brought up in say meeting Friday. So we're just it's Monday at 9 a.m. in the SACAB office. If anyone's from here is allowed to attend. Is that everything on this event? Yes, um, but I do want to make make this put this on the calendar. Do I have to vote to do that, or can we just put those on the calendar? Like put it on the calendar, like like, like make what? this sanction SGT SAC events. Like you want us to like sponsor it? Yeah, sponsor essentially, and and hopefully people attend. Attend. You have a, a fair amount of counselors attend and meet the students, meet students, and discuss needs of students. I think we should have like surveys there. This is a great opportunity to table, have surveys, give out things like for the school supplies or we have a bunch of extra swag we should probably get rid of in the back office as well. So like shirts. So that's what I'd like to put this on the calendar for. OK, Chad has a question. Is there okay. any request of funding or any legwork that needs to happen on our end before we my, approve of this? My goal is to have SACAB fund most of this. So um, the, we wouldn't have to spend a penny, just have um, events stuff there. I know we have a nice little cornhole thing in the back. Um, just bring what MSU would want students to kind of interact with at this event. It's only three hours, so I'm not asking for like a carnival, but um, yeah. OK, um, do, I don't think we need to do we? I don't think we need to vote on this since it doesn't ask any, anything of us. It's already happening. Just make it a goal, everyone to go. Yay. Uh, does that thank, sound good, Mike? Thank you all. That's perfect. Thank you. I will send out an invite soon. Oh, that's a good point. It's being sponsored by TSEC, so we have to be there. Yep. It's a great point, Stephanie. Um, OK, on to the discussion of proposed changes to teaching handbook by faculty Senate re. Actually, I had pointed that out earlier and we can skip that now. I would just urge all members to please look at my email that I sent you and place comments in the document that's on the OneDrive. The link is in the email. Thank you. All right, we are done with our items of new business. We will now go to closing. Uh, thank everybody. I thank everybody for attending um, in person and virtually. Um, hope to see you all in the office next week and uh, uh, be sure to tell Taylor if you would like to be chair for the day next week. Thanks, friends. Bye. Thank you, Council. Bye, everybody. All right, Alex, do you have something? I was okay. just going to see if we all um, potentially uh, condone the idea of the swipe system that um, the vice president had talked about um, at one point. Um, and if, if just trying to get kind of like a general pulse on that to see if it's worth writing a resolution for. Um, I love that, but let's put that on the agenda for next week. Does that sound good? Yeah, I was just yeah, yeah I was chat. just trying to see if people. Uh, Okay.